I'm on your site now trying to learn a bit more, of course, about Wish and, you know, what you're trying to accomplish here. But to the financials of the company, you're growing very quickly in your top line and is typical of many growth companies. You're also losing a lot of money, more than you did last year, certainly. Uh, when do you see Wish becoming a truly profitable enterprise? Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, look, I think as long as we focus on our core value proposition, uh, delivering value for our customers, uh, creating a fun shopping experience on mobile, uh, focused on value, the most bang for the buck. Think, uh, you know, TikTok for, for shopping. Uh, and uh, an easy way for manufacturers, digital vendors, brands to reach a global consumer base. Um, we will have opportunities to become profitable in the future. Uh, but in the long run, I think the key is uh, to continue driving uh, as much value as possible for both of these participants. Uh, despite sort of a very unpredictable year, not just for us and other e-commerce players with pros and cons, but for everyone. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll be watching, of course, uh, to see how the stock opens, particularly given the strong performance last week of Airbnb uh, and DoorDash. Interesting to hear you say a TikTok uh, for shopping. Others would say, well, you're, you're more like a dollar store uh, uh, online. Uh, is that a fair comparison? Look, I wouldn't necessarily say a dollar store. Um, you know, our, our uh, order values are probably much higher than that. But look, we focus on value. We focus on bang for the buck. Uh, we focus on delivering as much value for our consumers as possible. Uh, and that's served us well. And we believe that this is an underserved demographic. And we feel that this is a growing PAM, not only in terms of e-commerce, but e-commerce on mobile and e-commerce in the value conscious segment. Um, and the more that we continue to focus on giving our consumers the most bang for their buck, um, so the, the better the, the value proposition and the platform resonates with them. Peter, congrats on, on uh, going public today. Uh, this is Morgan, by the way. I, I'm just curious. It's been COVID has, as we know, just turbocharged e-commerce growth, particularly here in the U.S. Uh, right now. And yet when I, I look at your numbers, it looks like Q3 revenue growth actually moderated somewhat. Uh, why was that the case? How do you turn that around moving forward? Yeah, Morgan, that's a great question. Look, I think the important thing to remember is, um, of course, uh, there's a lot of sort of positive momentum uh, based on consumer and, and uh, consumer shift in demand uh, and uh, lockdown of retail and obviously stimulus, which helps all of e-commerce. One challenge that we specifically face is we have a sort of global uh, merchant basis uh, and a global sort of customer basis. And typically, um, prior to COVID, uh, in terms of our logistics partners, the way that we transported goods was in the underbelly of passenger aircraft. And mm -hmm. as that became really limited, we had to give our logistics carriers and ourselves a little bit of time to adjust. Uh, so in a way, that moderated our growth, but we feel very good about uh, where we are now. Yeah, that's such a key point you make. And certainly it's something we've been reporting on, the fact that there are these shipping constraints out there, because not only do you have major carriers that are now transporting vaccines, but you have limits, whether it's UPS, whether it's FedEx, whether uh, it's one of your competitors, Amazon, on um, how many goods can be shipped and, and moved throughout their networks this holiday peak shipping season. Um, how great are those constraints? How much do you expect those to carry over into the new year as well? Yeah, we feel very good about uh, where we are now. Um, we feel that our logistics partners, the carriers, especially doing the line haul, air freight uh, across continents uh, have made the necessary adjustments. And for better or worse, a lot of those passenger aircraft have become now de facto cargo aircraft for the most part. Uh, so I think things are uh, uh, looking quite stable uh, and uh, we're looking forward to continuing to grow. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.